Good morning and welcome to Living Light Toronto. My name is Jess Morton and today in the studio we have Jessica Silver who is the director of Access and Rise Canada but also is an accomplished writer and author. So tell me about your book. It got published through the Ontario Poetry Society which okay. I am a member of and I am a member of the Ontario Post Poetry Society for about two, two and a half years, give or take now. And I, first, my membership kind of started out as me going to meetings, like on Saturday mornings, and you would just basically go, and it would be like a group of us, group of us writers discussing poetry and what we do okay. in terms of, like, in the industry and stuff. And then um, the woman who's the founder of the Ontario Poetry Society, Bunny Iskov, she, I guess, noticed my potential and um, said to me, you know, why don't we work on getting a book of your poetry published? Oh, wow. So then I was like, okay, where do I start? Because I have, I have collections of my poetry from when I was six years old all the way up to now. Oh, yeah. So and so I was like, from. what do I do? <laughs> and, you know, I have roughs of poems that are in their very rough stages. Where do I go from here? And she kind of just said, well, we have to choose a master theme okay. for your book and go from there. So, <laughs> and uh, it's a collection of 20 poems um, that deal with the possibilities that can be discovered in life and sort of relating nature to um, human existence and stuff like that. First of all, tell me about the program Access and Rise Canada. What how did this first start? How did you, like, inspire to create this program? Access and Rise, the initiative of Access and Rise came from my own frustrations, if you'd like to call it that, of how inaccessible our society is. Now, you might kind of stop me and say, what do you mean it's inaccessible? You know, you're a person with a physical challenge and you're still, you were still able to go to university. Right. You're still able to go to all these places. Now, explain yourself when you're talking about inaccessibility. Okay. What many people don't realize is that places that even call themselves accessible, and I mean, when I mean call themselves accessible, I mean they have a sticker which qualifies <laughs> them as being an accessible institution. Right. Now, for many of them, it stops there. How is there any, like, certain ways the program works, like how to raise awareness? Well, what Access and Rise Canada now is, is we joined um, hands with the Canadian Anti-Bullying Coalition. Oh, wow. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to ameliorate the conditions for um, people with physical challenges, as I said, and also who are unfortunately subjects of bullying because um, bullying now, unfortunately, is on the rise in schools and many people don't realize the gravity of the issue, but the yeah. fact is that lives are being lost Yes. over, you know, these inc incidents. So what we are doing, what I'm doing essentially as the director of Access and Rise Canada is contacting different organizations and getting them on board with us, okay. telling them that we're Access and Rise Canada, we're, not, we're a national in initiative that's interested in ameliorating the um, social, infrastructural, and personal conditions when it comes to access Right. Bullying, making um, our society realize that you know conditions need to be changed. And yeah, well, some people I find don't take bullying as seriously as they should because it's changed so much since, like, say, my parents were in school. You know, yeah. there's so many more ways that people are being personally attacked now. For sure. And with, I mean, with oh. the advent of technology. Oh, and definitely. The advent and the advances of um, social media. I mean, we live in a world where. I, I check my Facebook daily. Yeah. I'm not one of those people who's on it hourly, you know, yeah. updating my status, but I check it daily for work reasons and, you know, to socialize with people. Yeah. And what people don't realize is that with these advances, okay, technological advances are great and they're necessary, but they create an environment in which um, bullying can flourish. Yeah. And, you know, People are, are victimized because of the accessibility, no pun intended, <laughs> of this medium, such as Facebook. With 
Access and Rise, what is your ultimate goal with the program? The ultimate goal with Access and Rise is to turn it into a national initiative. So to get granting from the government and to really align ourselves with partners such as um, hospitals and such as uh, organizations such as uh, the Ontario Federation of Cerebral Palsy, right. which I have already aligned us with. They are going to put us our project on their website and That's they're going amazing. to be attending our, our event that is going to be launched on December 15th. So it's really to Very cool. get the conversation started, as you have said, yes. and also to put more to the conversation to get action. Yeah, get things moving. You yeah. can't, you, yes, it's important to start the conversation, but you really got to But you can talk for something. hours about things. And, and you know, I've had people tell me, well, what are you doing to differentiate yourselves from other organizations that have already been talking about this? And I'm saying, well, the thing is, is that, yeah, there are many organizations that talk about this stuff and that already say, you know, accessibility exists. The, the, uh, the grants and the things already exist. Like, there's a building code that stipulates that there are certain uh, rules and regulations by which the businesses have to abide to make themselves accessible. Right. But the bottom line is they're not abiding by it. No, like they'll go to the bare minimum and then they're like, we're accessible now, but really you're not. You're not. You're not. And that's the thing. I, it was my last straw for me in the summer when I tried to, um, to get tickets for an event at the Black Creek Festival. Right, right, yeah. And uh, the, I called up and the person's like, well, we don't have the tickets you're looking for, but for accessible seating, you'd have to pay double the average price of a ticket. That is ridiculous. And you don't get the student discount because they're all already discounted if they're accessible. <laughs> and I just kind of stopped him and stopped myself after I got off the phone and I said, excuse me, I said, you're turning my physical challenge into a discounted opportunity That's for you guys to profit from? Ridiculous. Like, that is absolutely ridiculous. This discrepancy is unacceptable. With your event on the 15th, what is actually happening with that? And the event on the 15th is going to be our launch event. So I'm going to be, as the director, talking about my side of the, of the project, right. which is the access side, um, and defining the project essentially, as I'm doing for you right now, Okay. for another 150 people, I guess. <laughs> um, and... Uh, you know, talking about the project, talking about what we're hoping to do, and also showing footage of clips of how adversity comes up in pop culture. That's okay. what I'm hoping to do. That's and also kind of videos that evaluate the discrepancies that exist within accessibility and adversity. Okay, so when and you're also going to have keynote speakers. Oh, good. Well. So when you're there, basically, you're just... Raising awareness, that's the initial... Raising awareness and really telling people what we're about and getting organizations and, you know, people from whom we can benefit and who can benefit from us right. to partner with us. Because we're looking to get more and more businesses and notable people within the journalistic industry, if right. possible, to oh, okay. align themselves with us. So, Jess will be holding the Access and Rise think tank on December 15th at the Swansea Town Hall. So tickets are available on the Future Real website if you guys want to go and I highly recommend it. Thank you and I'm Jess Morton with Living Light Toronto.